I'm going to do is I'm going to examine each one of these jars, take a look and make sure that all of my mycelium is healthy, that there's no uh, contamination, no green spots, there's no problem, they're all fully colonized. And I'm gonna shake them to break up the mycelium. So you're gonna get, get all the chunks smoothed out as much as possible. And you'll see why we're doing this later, because when we pour it out of the out of the jar, you want them to pour evenly. And if it's just one big chunk of mycelium, it won't come evenly out of the jar. Okay, next we're gonna prepare the jars for being opened. Um, if these, these rings have gotten a little bit too tight during the cooking process, you can hit it a couple times with your spoon to loosen it. You just take off the ring. Don't actually remove the top yet. Leave that seal in place and just take them off one at a time and line them up. There we go. Now, I'm going to just douse the outside of these jars with the rubbing alcohol, and I'm going to also douse my hands. Now, this is the bag of substrate that we have, we've cooked. To take it out and give it a quick little inspection to make sure that it's intact, nothing burst, nothing is damaged. And my, my goal is to get the contents of these jars into this bag with the substrate while exposing it to the open air as little as possible. So I'm going to keep this inner bag here pretty much closed. Keep it draped and closed like that in that closed position as much as possible. I can't actually keep air from going in because it's not actually sealed, but if I keep it closed like that, as little air will, will allow things to settle in there as possible. So let's go ahead. So I take one hand and hold close the bag. And I take the jar. Sneak it in there like that. And sneak the top out. Hold it upside down, dumping the contents in. And that is what I'm going to do, one at a time. And you see that how in the jar some of it didn't actually fall out? Now that I've removed it from the bag, that's a goner. Just, just leave it. Forget it. So this is what I'm gonna do, one after another. Take each jar. Yep, 
If there are any remaining clumps that didn't get broken up during the shaking process, I can smooth them out through the plastic. Be careful, don't treat the plastic that roughly because you don't want to cause any holes or any punctures. With this technique, contamination is highly, highly unlikely because all of the, the nutrition that I'm introducing to this bag is already claimed by the actual mycelium. Any spores looking to land in here, which I mean, could happen, will find it very difficult to find anything to eat because it's like, already claimed. Last jar. All of the grain is in the bag. Okay, so now that all the grain is actually in the bag, I'm gonna give my hands another spray with the alcohol real quick. And I wanna spray the outside of the bag really well. And I want to spray the mouth of the bag where I've been handling it pretty well too. Lots of alcohol. When you grow mushrooms. I want to get the inside of my fruiting chamber one more time for good luck. Then I'm going to take this whole bag, get the bottom part of the bag, and then place the whole bag sort of sideways into the fruiting chamber. Spray it one more time and close. I'm gonna close just, to make sure you see this really well, that I close only one side and I have the corner of the bag sticking out. Can you see that? I have a really good hold on the corner of the bag. Now, I'm going to just sneak that bag out. I'm gonna start pulling it and wiggling it until I have the whole bag come out, dumping the contents inside the fruiting chamber. See how it's going through? Okay, so now you see that you have grain spawn in there mixed with um, substrate 
And now we gotta get this even. So I'm gonna have to shake this. Okay, you can get rather violent with your shaking. I got it pretty even. And then you have to sort of sift it until the contents then are going to be even. So now I have the grains. Okay, now this is ready to just sit and colonize for another, say somewhere around, it could be two weeks, three weeks, a little bit more depending on the temperature. Optimal colonizing temperature is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And eventually all this is going to turn white, or partially white, just like the grains did when they were colonizing. And this is what the tub looks like after about five days of growth. As you can see, there are patches of white. Now let's look at the side. As you can see, around each little patch of grain, you get about like a starburst of mycelium. So now that this tub has been colonizing for about three weeks, it looks like it is completely done. As you can see, the mycelium is evenly distributed throughout the substrate. And if I look in, through the condensation, it looks like the whole surface is completely covered in white. So the mycelium is completely distributed. It's very important that the surface be completely covered in mycelium because I want the mycelium to be there to defend the surface from any contamination that could land on the surface after I take off this tape and start opening the top. So now let's go ahead and peel off this tape. I'm going to have to peel it off both sides because I have holes on both sides. And let's go ahead and open the top. And it's looking pretty good in there. Completely covered in mycelium. If you look really closely, you can see the beginning pins starting to pop up. Those are baby mushrooms. Now, you don't really have to do much more after this. As you can see, I've taken the micropore tape off of the holes, and there's a very our substrate pretty deep and pretty thick so there's a lot of moisture held inside this cake so I've opened up the the tape to allow for airflow I'm going to give it a couple of waves with the top to get the air flowing then close it back up again About once or twice a day, I'm going to open it up and give it a couple of swipes with that top. And as long as there is condensation, there's moisture on the surface, on the, on the walls inside of the container, I don't really have to worry about spraying it or watering it. But if it starts to look a little dry in there, I'll take a water bottle, a spray bottle with water and give it a few sprays inside to make sure that it stays, it stays wet. But with a substrate layer this thick, it should stay, it should maintain its moisture levels. If I'm having trouble maintaining the moisture inside, what I can do is I can take a little bit more micropore tape and cover up a couple of these holes. That will slow down the evaporation process.